Hello everybody, I'm Captain Mamgen. Uh, we've been talking about uh, day's work where we found uh, our final position in questions where the position was given right in the beginning or position was given as bearing and distances or doubling up the angles. So today I will just uh, finish up on this topic of uh, day's work uh, by t talking about a few different type of problems uh, in which uh, uh, we'll be having different situations in which uh, we'll be uh, uh, stopping the vessel, uh, uh, reversing the current and other things. And as long as you understand all this, I don't think you'll have any problems solving any type of uh, questions coming up your way in day's work. To start off with here in this particular question, I have uh, just come up with this here that the current is reversing, uh, changing the direction between certain times here and expected to find out our position by the end of the run. So this is what uh, we have uh, a lighthouse or a point of land bearing and distance is given and various courses done afterwards with current and expected to find out our estimated position. In this, we see that the current is applicable for a certain amount of time and there is no current for a certain amount of time and then it changes direction. So to solve such a type of a question, what we talked about right in the beginning, we start off with reverse bearing. Now, you could use reverse bearing to find out the initial position. If you ask for the initial position, if you are not asked for, uh, need not calculate your initial position. Because no hard and pass rule, you can go ahead and calculate your initial position. But I would rather use it as the first course and distance to obtain my final position. And then we have courses given here, first course and the log. Second course and the log here again. How do you find out the distances between the two courses? Is subtracting the logs. And so on, the next course being given to me. Again, the log, so the distance covered between the alteration of courses here. And so on. This is how you do it with your, when the logs are given, find out the distances covered in between the two courses where the logs have been given to you. This course has been maintained till 200 hours. And so the final distance would be the difference between the logs readings here. After this, he's talked about that this current which is setting up at uh, 180 two knots for a certain amount of time here. So I would use the current as the last course. As I said that I use the first course as the reverse uh, bearing and the last course as uh, the current. No hard and fast rule. You can do it anyway as long as you do not forget that uh, the reverse bearing and the current has to be applied in these questions. I do it is because I do not forget. I remember that the thing should be used, so I use them as the first and last course. Yeah, it is for a certain amount of time, like 1300 to 1600, 2.5 hours, so the drift applicable would be for 2.5 hours at the rate of 2 knots would be 5 miles. Similarly, next current for 4 hours, applicable for 4 hours, 6 miles. And then the normal way what we talked about applying the error, finding out our two course, and then finding out a course made good in quadrant form, then finding out our daylights and departures, adding up all of them, and finding our 
position. Now, if this question you were asked, you find out your course mate got, so it's not a part of the question here. Then how would I approach it is that I would remove the first course, which was the reverse bearing, as this course has not been physically done by the ship. So I would remove this from the total, the delat and departure of this from the total of this, and use only the delat and departure of the courses and distances made good by the ship. Uh, including the current because invariably the ship has performed this courses by the uh, by the effect of the current so to find out your course and distance just remove this that is subtracted from the subtract or add from your total delayed departure and you can use your formula to get the course and distance uh, in the second question, he has asked me to find out the set and drift and then apply it to the whole question here. So the question is somewhere like this with all the courses, object position has been given. He wants me to find out the set and drift at 20 hundred hours and it allow it for the similar set throughout. Now, how do we approach this question? The course and distance have been given to me, which I converted into my quadrant form. And this is how the ship is. Um, uh, your position given, all the various courses been conducted, and this is my DR. So, in this question, what he has done is he has given me a observed position at 20 hundred hours. And then he wants me to find out the set and drift of 20 hundred hours. And that set and drift has to be allowed for the rest of the day. So to find out my DR position, at, uh, I have to find out my drift, set and drift till 20 hundred hours, I require my DR position. So I would have to calculate my DR position at 20 hundred hours. Calculate my DR. Till 20 hundred hours, I really do not require the courses which have been done after 20 hundred hours. So my interest now at present is only the courses and distances made good from 1200 to 20 hundred hours. So first I would calculate my DR for 20 hundred hours by using the courses between 12 and 20 hundred hours and I get my final position by getting my DLAT from here using it to the uh, on the position given to me and converting my departure what I have got into D long and getting my DR position. So I get my DR position. Now I have been given the absolute position. I try to figure out where my absolute position is in uh, respect to my DR, which I see here. The DLAD is south, and the long is west, so I should be south west of my DR. That's my absolute position. We know that the set and current drift is the course and distance made between the DR position and the observed position. So we'll find out our course and distance between DR and the observed position by using the formulas, trigonometrical functions for a plane uh, right angle triangle here. And we get our course and distance, which is your second drift. Now, here he says, allow the similar set and drift throughout the remainder of the day. Now, this set and drift, what we have calculated, is only for 8 hours. The remainder of the day is 16 hours. So, we find the drift for 16 hours here. That is double. That is what would be applicable 
or throughout the day after 2800 hours. Now here he wants me to find out the position afterwards. So now my question, uh, my answer is going to start off after 2800 hours. I have already used this data on top for finding out my dia. So I get rid of this and my solution starts from 2800 hours. And it would start from the observed position now because I have been given the observed position. So my all this data what has been given has to be applied on observed position. And the sit and drift for remaining 16 hours have to be used. So I use this as my last course to find out my position. Next known and I put in all the values to get my DR or estimated position at noon next day. So normal day what you have been calculating your positions and we have our dr noon next day now he's asked me to find out the course and distance also made good during this time i have the position the noon previous day i have the position now the next day and i can find out my course and distance between the two points the answers are here. The average speed. So you'll have to divide the distance between this by the time uh, the ship has traversed. That's 24 hours. So divided by 24, you get your average speed. And this question, I have just jumbled up everything. I have uh, used current. I have reverse the current, I have increased the strength of the current, there is an engine breakdown, there is a change in uh, clocks, I have advanced the clocks and then I expected to find out the EP next day. So in this question I have used stoppages, currents, reverse the current, engine breakdown. How to go approach uh, in this problem? All the courses have been given to me. He says the current is setting northeast at 2 knots. 0200. At the time from noon, 0200, 14 hours. So should be 28 miles. And the direction should be northeast. I have written the direction here, not the distances, because some other part of the question. Uh, is involved in the distances here. And he says that there is lull for one hour, that is there is no current between two and uh, three. Now the direction has been changed northeast, it is reversed to southwest and the strength has increased to three knots. And this is applicable till noon next day which is nine hours from three to nine, three to twelve is nine hours, twenty-seven miles. So, I put the current for 9 hours here. There is an engine breakdown between 3 and 4. 3 and 4, when the ship was doing 40 knots. 2 to 8, the engine broke down is basically 6 hours at the speed of 40 knots. The ship would have sailed for six hours, but there was a breakage, just a stoppage for one hour. So the ship has sailed only for five hours. So the distance covered would be used would be for five hours, which is 70 miles. And then the question states that uh, there is an advancing of clock at midnight. Somewhere here, I was doing 13 knots. Now. 16 to 20 hundred hours, it is 10 hours, but we advanced the clocks, so that means 
we have sailed one hour less so my distances would be accordingly if the clocks were advanced uh, retarded then it would be 11 hours so the distance covered between 16 and 02 now here is, is for four, five, uh, 9 hours and then 17 miles now when i advanced my clocks so i have sailed one day less in the day so the current itself here what we talked right in the beginning from 12 to 0 2 for 14 hours the ship has actually sailed only for 13 hours during this particular time so the current applicable would be for 13 hours not for 14 hours so that is the distance uh, that is the current applicable 26 miles the drift now in these type of questions it all depend upon what is happening with the clocks if you are advancing retarding your day would be 23 hours or 25 hours depending upon advancing or retarding now your current would be applicable throughout the time what the ship has sailed irrespective of any stoppages so if there is stoppages also the current would still be playing its role so current would have to be applied even when the ship is stopped and the rest of the question continues the same way around the time between these this course and find out your distances and normal way you will find out your course made good find out your delayed departure and you calculate your position now to sum it up the initial position is given with the uh, reverse with the bearing you could use that to find out your initial position or use it as the first course to find out your final dr position so i'll leave it to your judgment what you want to do as i said i would prefer to use it at my first course now if the position was not asked i would uh, as i said i would leave it and use it as the first course uh, it is up to you if you want to find out your initial position go ahead nothing wrong with that current last course i prefer it because then i do not forget it in his first course should be reverse course and the final thing should be current so I do not forget it you can use it as long as you are using it it's good enough now, advancing or retarding of clocks you will have to take into account this for all your calculations if the speeds are given then definitely the distance is covered you will have to take into account how much time the ship has been making way but if it is long then your advancing or retarding of clocks would really not make a difference because clock uh, 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 log is reading the distance covered only when the ship is making way. Currents would be applicable for the duration of the time the ship is making way. So uh, it really does not make if there is any stoppages or current. Final the course and distances. If you have used your reverse bearing as your first course, remove that and use only the delight and departure of the courses which the ship has uh, done. Uh, doubling the angle, we know that uh, the distances of are when the ship angle is doubled up. Uh, and the distances uh, off is the distance covered between the two bearings. So your question for finding out your uh, your answer to find out your position would start off from the angle when the angle is doubled up and the rest of the courses and distance performed after when the ship is, you come to know about the distance of the ship. So thank you for being with me. Uh, soon I should be starting off with uh, Celestial Navigation. Thank you.